Hey, what's good, gamers? Aklon here, and of course, welcome uh, back to each and every one of you. Now, I'm coming off the amazing launch of The War Within. We played it last night for about eight hours, and we're going to be starting again today. So come join us over on Twitch if you have not already. But I thought I'd make this video just sort of as an initial sort of uh, kind of giving my thoughts on what I think of the new expansion how I feel about Kaz Algar. Now, I'm still in Kaz Algar after eight hours. Usually at this point, I'm done, basically. I'm I'm pretty much at the end, maybe in the final zone, maybe a couple of dungeons left, and some side quests. Because, you know, th this is something that we're going to be talking about. But it's been eight hours, and I'm still in Kaz Algar, and I'm not bored. I'm having the time of my life in that zone. So let's quickly talk about some of the things. Now, I'm assuming that a lot of the people that's watching this are already playing The War Within, but I also know that I have a number of viewers that don't play WoW and are asking, because I got this question quite a lot yesterday during the stream. They want to know, is this worth coming back for? Is this game going to last? Is this going to, you know, is the hype going to continue or is it going to go away? So I want to be clear about one thing. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you absolutely have to buy this game. This is the perfect World of Warcraft expansion ever, even though I do actually feel that at this point. But I've made this point before. One of the key things that I'm going to be looking forward to in World of Warcraft The War Within is the first patch. Blizzard have always been very good at knocking it out of the park in the base game. It's once we get to the first patch that really we'll be able to judge just what is the content cadence like? What is the story offerings like? Is it going to be a lot more rushed? Is it going to be a lot more like Dragonflight? Because if they can continue the, the, the standards that they've set for themselves in Dragonflight, that's when I'll finally be fully sold on this expansion, and I will tell you as much. But for now, I am going to just talk sort of, this really just is a talking video uh, of my thoughts and my uh, feelings uh, about the game. So I want to start with the intro cinematic. Whoa, boy. <laughs> Blizzard actually, like, I was very upset when Blizzard allowed for testing of the intro questline that leads into the War Within. Because I was like, dude, you, you guys said you're not going to put this on the PTR. Now you're just spoiling the whole thing. And sadly, it was spoiled for me. As I played through it, though, nothing could have prepared me for that ending. Nothing could have prepared me for what came after it. Blizzard managed in that moment to capture the magic, the adventure, the mystery of what is the war within. What is this new world that we're going to? What is Khazalgar? There's a moment there where you just land on Khazalgar, and for really the first time ever, you're not in a new place purely by accident or, or on purpose. You're there by accident, right? Uh, this wasn't the plan. You weren't supposed to crash. It is overwhelming, and you're leaving with so many emotions from the intro questline. I'm not going to do spoilers, or at least I'm going to try not to do spoilers. But there's, there's just so much emotion, and you're on this world that looks incredible. The art team and the sound team, the music team of uh, The War Within, just absolutely phenomenal. Like, some of the best music, and I've always been a fan of the music in World of Warcraft, just to be clear, but this is the best it's ever been. Uh, I love the fact that there's... A lot more interaction with the music in the world. So when you go into caves, for example, the music will shift from being a little bit more uh, sort of open and adventurous and, and light to very dark, very heavy music inside the cave, which just helps set the stage for where you are. Now, it doesn't go quite as far as, for example, Final Fantasy XIV, where the bosses have their own music that's playing, but I fully appreciate that. That's never been part of World of Warcraft's sort of tool set they've never done that and i think starting to do it now would probably be a bit jarring for a lot of, for a lot of players and also most players play with muted sound which i don't know why you're doing it because you really are missing out uh, i remember running uh, from outside of the zone into this forest area that's completely rotting and by the way this is a side quest just a side quest that has this giant story about an area of the map and, and you get to explore this area of the map and see what happens to this area of the map. And you can see how the side quest is eventually going to tie into the main storyline or at least feed into it in some way. And yet it's still just a side quest with phenomenal voice, uh, not voice acting, but phenomenal uh, voice lines, 
The dialogue is really good this time around. But all right, so as you run into this forest, the music again changes. It becomes dark. It becomes sort of very almost oppressive, the music. And you get the sense of, whoa, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So just absolutely phenomenal. The graphics are also, it just looks beautiful. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. It looks, this is the most, this is the best looking expansion ever. Uh, now let's quickly talk about the zone. The zone feels alive. Uh, this is something that Blizzard really nailed in Dragonflight. And they just continued to learn from that. And they've gotten better at it. The zone really feels like a zone where people live, where people are doing things. You don't get the sense that anything is out of place. You don't get the sense that Blizzard is just trying to fit as many things into this this small little area as humanly possible. And then once you get to the main city of Kazalgar, I think that's where my mind truly was blown. This is probably one of the best main city hubs I've ever had. We've ever had in World of Warcraft because it genuinely feels like a city. It feels like you can see people living here. You can see people doing things here. The storyline of that, I guess we can quickly talk about the storyline. The storyline is phenomenal. Uh, this is the first time in a very, very long time since Legion, really, where every quest I do, I want to do another one because I want to see where the story... I have to physically pull myself from the main storyline to start doing the side quests because I want to finish all of the quests in the zone before I move on. Uh, but I had to physically pull myself from that because everything in me was just screaming, dude, just go. We need to see what happens next. This this is insane because the story just builds. It starts with a bang and then it sort of, it doesn't completely go into a lull, but it goes into sort of like an exploratory phase where there, no one knows what's really going on. There's no one with the actual answers. You're investigating what is happening and you're trying to figure out what actually is going on. And the player is very much involved in that process all throughout, uh, which I found very, very good. That was one of my main feedbacks uh, during Shadowlands, BFA, and even in Dragonflight to some extent, where the player sometimes ends up feeling like just a fly on the wall. You end up feeling like this. You're just watching a movie out, uh, play out. Uh, actually, some of the least kill quests I think I've ever done in World of Warcraft. Like, so many of the quests barely involve killing anything. Like, it's it's removing rubble, or it's closing sinkholes, or it's just collecting stuff. And it's not like collecting 20 of anything. It's more collecting specific items and helping people out. So very, very good. Like, the variety of questing is also very much lending itself to the storytelling of the zone. And the story really is phenomenal. And you can see fundamentally and i guess we're sort of doubling back a little bit to the visuals part here but from a visual perspective one of the really cool things here is you can see blizzard took a lot of time trying to make the world tell its own story so this is what we call implicit storytelling so implicit storytelling or world building as but the problem with world building or using the word world building is it encompasses so many other things because lore is also world building narrative can be world building so instead what we're talking about is implicit storytelling uh cc has used this last night on stream and i was like yeah that's perfect because that's exactly what this is implicit storytelling is where the the images that you see in front of you is telling its own story and it's not telling it to you directly it's implicit. So by looking at the world around you, you can sort of piece together this story. You can piece together what actually happened here. And then you do have quests in these areas, and the quests just sort of further lend itself to the storytelling, where you look at this world and you go, I, I don't know exactly what happened here, but I do want to figure it out. Like, for example, that forest that I told you about. The conclusion of that forest is, is good, but it sort of leaves you on a cliffhanger because even though you've kind of gone there and did the thing that you wanted to do and people who've already played through it will know exactly what I'm talking about, you don't actually know why any of that stuff is happening, right? There's a lot of questions and, and that's really the good thing about this expansion. It raises so many questions for me about what this story has to offer and just how deep this story is going to go. Also, the Earthen, uh, their their culture, their history is insane. And the reason their history is just absolutely mind-boggling is they can't remember anything, right? There's, like, giant bits of their memory that is completely gone. And I don't think this is a spoiler at all, 
but there's this one uh, journal that you find in the world that talks about uh, none of the Earthen remembering their original Titan. So they know that there was a Watcher, not, not a Titan, a Watcher that they served. They just can't remember the Watcher's name. They, they, can't, they can't remember what the, the Watcher looks like. They have these stories of what the Watchers used to do, but they don't know who this Watcher used to be. And the character questions whether or not these memories were removed on purpose, or if this is just a result of their machines going down. Now, again, I, I want to try and keep this as spoiler-free as is humanly possible, because I know there's still people playing through this and, and people sort of looking into the story. But yeah, fundamentally, just absolutely phenomenal. The implicit storytelling, the explicit storytelling, the lore, the narrative. This is the best narrative I've ever seen in World of Warcraft. For the first time ever, I'm having conversations with NPCs, and it feels like actual conversations. It doesn't feel like the NPCs are just talking at each other. Uh, a good example of this would be watching the cinematic where the dragon aspects got their powers back, right, from Azeroth. That is a great example of NPCs just speaking at each other. Each of the NPCs have a bit of information that they want to relay to the other NPCs, and they just blurt it out there. Whereas there's this new thing that Blizzard utilizes, which is literally just called stay a while and listen. Every single time you're done with a quest, keep an eye out for these little chat bubbles that open up ab above the NPCs' heads. This is a, sing a signal that there is a stay a while and listen moment here. These can last a while, right? Uh, they can actually last like a good two, three minutes of the NPCs just having conversations between one another and revealing lore and story. And it feels like genuine conversations, like how people would actually converse with one another. It is phenomenal. And a lot of it is actually voice acted. Actually, all of them thus far has been voice acted, which is insane. <laughs> but okay, Blizzard does another thing in this uh, expansion. For the first time ever, Blizzard splits the MSQ from the zone now uh in the past the msq would oftentimes be a collection of main storyline quests so quest lines that deal with the actual main problem and then quest lines that actually doesn't really deal with the main problem deals more with the zone problems right and oftentimes you'd have these giant stretches of msq main storyline quests that only deal with a zone wide problem and even though the zone wide problem is kind of connected maybe to the main storyline it's not directly connected to the main storyline. This time around, Blizzard completely took a different approach. The main storyline takes... It's very quick. I think it took us like two hours to play through the entirety of the MSQ. This is the main storyline. This is the storyline you have to follow in order to go to the next zone. About two hours. Then it was done. Very good. Very phenomenal storytelling. And we did make it a little bit longer for ourselves because I did all the stay a while and listens, right? But fundamentally, very quick. And then you get all of the side quests. And all of those quests that used to be more zone relevant rather than main story relevant, they've now been moved to side quests. So you have these phenomenal side quest story chains that can last quite a while, like a half an hour to 45 minutes per side quest sometimes. Not always. Sometimes it is just a very quick side quest. But these are the quests that really fill out the story of the zone. What is happening in the zone? Why are things the way that they are? If you have questions about why this faction and this faction isn't getting along, there will be a side quest that explains this in a lot more detail that you can play through. And I think that this landed phenomenally well. The, like, this is the perfect way to tell the story because it really does mean that those people that don't care, they can literally just blast through, get to the end, get to max level and start leveling and start doing their thing. And people like myself that do actually care, I can run into every single building. I can check out every single thing. There are so many in-game books. By the way, massive shout out to two add-ons. Uh, the one add-on is Lore Keeper. You absolutely have to get that because it keeps track of every book that you collect in the game. And the other one is Dialogue UI. Dialogue UI. Pick that up immediately. It changes the UI for questing entirely. And I actually think the vanilla team... Just copy that. Just use that as the new dialogue option. Because it is brilliant. It's really, really good. Um, yeah, fundamentally, guys, I've been blown away just in the first zone. I'm probably going to move to Hollowfall today. So by the time you're watching this, we'd probably already be done streaming. Uh, but fundamentally, just an absolutely phenomenal experience thus far. But let me know. 
Have you played it already? How are you enjoying it? Please, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Then remember, $5 a month over on Patreon gets you early access to all of the lore videos that we have coming out, as well as a chance to win $50 on the 25th of every single month. And the winner for this month is Christiana. Christiana, if you can check your DMs, I've DM'd you. I need your details so that I can send you your 50 bucks. So please check that out over on Patreon. Links in the description down below. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, be good to each other. Be kind to each other. And I will see all of you in the next one. Peace.